Okay, we'll get started here. So this is um, the Universal Connector demo. My name's Sean Blair, the Product Control Manager um, at Bold. How many of you guys have actually seen the Universal Connector Media Gateway components? Okay, a couple people. So I'm going to start just by kind of running through the interface, talking about what the Universal Connector really is and where it um, comes from. So let's start off by looking at the, uh, the Media Gateway piece here. So the Universal Connector is really part of the Media Gateway, and it's actually a license component. The uh, Media Gateway is the, the product that contains the telephony equipment, um, so any of the two-way instant connect, those type of things are also built into the Media Gateway. If you're familiar with the, the first generation Media Gateway, you're probably used to seeing the tabs along the uh, side here between operations and activity. What we've done here is we've moved everything over to the uh, left-hand side, so there's a tree. So we have our social media, uh, universal connector, and then some of the general media gateway components like menus and uh, line drivers, things like that that you're used to seeing. The universal connector is driven off a lot of that same technology. So what we've added here is we've taken the concept of the older XML gateway, which used to map signals from an ODBC database and an email server, and move that over so it can actually bring that mapping into the media gateway. And that piece is called the, uh, the universal connector. So let's start off by looking at um, the, the data mapping piece, because this will really be the key to, to the universal connector. So I'm going to start off here. This data map that I have set up is just called SecureEye. Um, this is one of the integrations. You've probably seen them outside uh, as, as one of our partners. This is the data map for that piece. So we have our transmitter ID, event code, area, and so on as, as we go down there. They're actually sending binary video through as part of this. So what's happening is that signal is hitting the universal connector. We're running it through this data map parsing each section appropriately so it can hit a, an account. And the reason I'm showing you that is because I've got a lot of signals coming through, so I'm going to bounce over here to uh, an actual SecureEye alarm. Um, this alarm from SecureEye, you can see hit an account that's called SecureEye, and it has a receiver line prefix, transmitter ID, all the traditional things that you would expect. Let me go ahead and hide that. Look at the alarm info. So you can see what the universal connector did there, or what its job is, is really to break out that information from that packet that's sent and put it into uh, information that, that you're used to seeing in Manitou. So you can see here we have our transmitter ID, point ID zone, and all that information. Um, the other reason I wanted to show this is because it's kind of cool. It's actually sending binary video through as part of the XML packet. So if I launch the binary video piece. We'll actually see that video clip. Now this was sent as part of the packet and this was transmitted through uh, to Manitou. There we go, just click on the media matrix. So again, just a, a simple camera, but this is an integration that's coming through or sending video through the, the universal connector. So it's actually sending that, that binary video through. So we'll back up here and take a look at some of the other uh, components in the universal connector now that we've seen a signal come through. Right here, this is a list of all the, the possible connectors. I'll skip the first two because those are telephony related and, and look at the rest down. We have SMS, email, SMS gateway, ODBC, FTP, TCP, um, RSS, and file. Those are all the various connector types that you can um, monitor with the universal connector. So the one that I want to focus on today will be TCP um, because I have our bold SOS app here and I'll, I'll send a signal all the way through using that. Um, the thing that's true about all these connectors is you can set them up with different permissions to basically do something. So ODBC, for example, you would have access to a database. You could read the rows in the database, parse them, and send them through as a signal. The consistent theme is we're trying to get that signal from a non-traditional device into Manitou and have it look the same for all the operators. So you want your operators to have a signal that looks just like any Berg or Fire panel sent it through. 
And that's really what we're trying to achieve here with these non-traditional devices. So on the TCP <clears throat> connector, this will be our method to actually have the signal come from the app all the way through. We have the ability to set the IP type, so uh, TCP or UDP is really what we're going to see there. Um, uh, HTTP POST or HTTP GET, and then we've got our connection type, whether it's listen or send. So if we're going to go out and connect to an IP address or if we're going to bring up um, a port on our machine and allow something to connect to us. So for bold SOS, we're just using uh, a listen. So we've got, we're basically listening on port 10,083, and then we're waiting for a signal to come through from that side. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the button here on my app. So we'll let that go. And now what's going to happen here on the app is the app's actually going to call out to the media gateway, and the media gateway will answer uh, to do a, a two-way call. But what we're ending up with here, what we're looking for in the universal connector is the actual signal. So right here we can see, if I pause that, going to hang up on the operator side. You can see that we received an XML packet through our TCP connector, and we're using our field set bold SOS, so it's going through that data map, and then it's being broken up into sections that are important here. So we have our transmitter ID, which is the phone number, caller ID for my phone, type of alarm, panic, that type of thing. And I'll move over to Manitou and look at the alarm queue. There's my account here, bring that up. And here I have a, a panic alarm that's in Manitou. Uh, pretty boring action pattern in this sense, but contact police, contact the customer. So nothing fancy, but it looks just like it would from any, um, again, alarm panel that, that hangs on the wall and that type of thing. And then if I go ahead and hit yes, I want to see my GPS coordinates on the map. Because this is a mobile device, it's got me located here in, in downtown Colorado Springs. Um, yeah, we've got West Colorado and Cascade right there. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, if you can apply kind of in your mind that um, information being sent from, from a phone and then being parsed through the universal connector and into Manitou, so you've got that non-traditional method. It's, it's not what we're used to in the security industry. It's um, one of those devices. It could be any GPS device or anything that can send a signal through, okay? So the, and that applies, again, for all the different connectors, but I think those two, kind of with the video and that piece, kind of highlight what we're looking to, uh, to look at today.